okay so friends today i am going to discuss about a topic called as a real depth and apparent depth so in this real depth and apparent depth i am going to discuss about how the bird is going to catch the fish and how the fish is getting cheated because of concept of refraction now here let me show you some of the clips here so when a bird is going to catch a fish or any animal like snakes which are coming very close to the surface of the water what is happening definitely bird is going to catch it and it is going to fly away so nearly the concept says that the bird gets cheated by i mean the fish gets cheated by birds and the concept behind this is real depth and apparent depth now we shall discuss about what do you mean by real depth and apparent depth okay now let me discuss about the concept here it's a very clear and small concept to understand this concept we should know first of all what do you mean by refraction what do you mean by refraction so the refraction says that when you are going to consider a denser medium and a rarer medium so what do you mean by denser medium denser medium means molecules are very very close let us consider the denser medium here is water and the rarer medium here is air okay so now this is going to be a water we are going to consider here this is going to be a water we are going to consider here i am drawing one normal i am drawing one normal here so when a light ray enters from rarer to denser medium it bends towards a normal it bends towards a normal this is a normal the light ray which he the light ray which is drawn normal to the surface normal to the surface of the water what do you mean by normal actually here normal is nothing but the light ray which makes 90 degrees it is going to make 90 degrees with the surface now this is going to be angle of incidence and this is going to be angle of refraction now here the light ray comes from rarer to denser medium it bends towards a normal the reason for that is sudden change in velocity i have discussed already about this we can take a general example you are going on a tar road suddenly on the way there is some sand on the tar road when you enter from tar road to sand definitely sudden decrease in the velocity of bike takes place because of which your bike is tilted from its actual position i have discussed in the previous video also about this so sudden change in velocity creates deviation for example light ray enters along the direction of the normal there is no chance of deviation if light ray enters directly along the normal there is no chance of deviation but when the light ray comes a little bit slant that is a little bit making certain angle with the normal definitely bends towards the normal now actually what is the direction of the light ray this is the direction of the light ray this is the way the light ray has to travel but the light ray is deviated from the actual path and that deviation is considered to be delta how do you find out this delta here so the first case i am going to discuss here is rarer to denser okay so rarer to denser so now when i am going to consider the light ray travels from rarer to denser what is going to happen what is going to happen when light ray enters from rarer to denser it its velocity suddenly reduces so delta i have to find out now so here this angle and this angles both are going to be same now so you can write i is equal to r plus delta this total angle and this angle is going to be same because these are called as vertically opposite angles these are called as vertically opposite angles so here 
Now you can find out delta is equal to I minus R. You can find out the delta is equal to I minus R. This is called as deviation. This is called as deviation produced by light ray. When it travels from rarer to denser medium because of sudden decrease in the velocity. Sudden decrease in the velocity. And we can consider the velocity of light in the rarer medium as C. That is air. Especially if you consider air or vacuum. We consider velocity of light as C. And we consider the velocity of light when it enters into the denser medium as V. So what do you mean by refractive index here? Refractive index is given by letter mu. So what is this refractive index explaining here? Let us see. So refractive index is the ratio of velocity of light in air to the velocity of light in the medium. I just said that this can be considered as a C by V. And this type of refractive index is called as absolute refractive index. Absolute refractive index means what is the meaning here? Always comparing the velocity of light in some other medium with respect to air. If you always compare any medium with respect to air, that is called as absolute refractive index. And now absolute refractive index is given by mu A is equal to C by V. That is velocity of light in air or vacuum divided by velocity of light in any other medium. So this is called as absolute refractive index. Now let me discuss about relative refractive index. What do you mean by relative refractive index? So this is refractive index with some other medium with respect to air. See second medium. This is called as second medium. This is called as first medium. So first medium is taken as a superscript, the second medium is taken as a subscript here. So thus, let us discuss about relative refractive index here. What is the meaning of relative refractive index? Relative refractive index is nothing but comparing two different mediums. For example, I have drawn a normal here. This is water and this is glass. If two different mediums you are going to consider. So in this case light enters from water to glass. As definitely water is a rarer medium and glass is a denser medium. How will you decide it is a rarer or denser? In glass molecules are closer compared to water. So as the molecules are very closer it is called as denser medium. Light speed will decrease when it enters from rarer to denser medium. And this is called as angle of incidence. This is called as angle of refraction here. This is relative refractive index. Previously we have taken C and V here. But here you have to consider refractive index in the first medium. And refractive index that is velocity of light in the first medium to the velocity of light in the second medium. This is called as relative refractive index. To understand this concept I will give you a beautiful example. So for example, some of the students, some of the students, whenever they get good marks, for example, any student got 98 marks out of 100. This is called as absolute marks because they are comparing with 100. They will tell their father that dad, I got 98 marks out of 100. I am proud of you. Are you proud of me? Definitely father will feel proud of you. But... Whenever you got very less marks, you got only 78 marks, then what are you going to do? You will play tricks here, you will say, Dad, my friend got only 75, she is the topper in the class, but I got 78 marks. That means you are not comparing with 100. You are comparing with your friend's marks to escape from your dad's scoldings. But this is not an absolute mark. Your father will say, I am not bothered about your friend's marks. I am bothered about your marks. I want absolute. How many marks you got out of 100? That is my question here. Not out of 75. Don't compare. This is called as relative marks. This is called as absolute marks. Always comparing the velocity with respect to air is called as absolute marks. Comparing the velocity of medium with respect to some other medium is called as relative refractive index. So relative refractive index is given by mu to 1. What do you mean by mu to 1? 
superscript is going to be the first medium and subscript is going to be the second medium so here you can write mu 1 2 as mu 2 with respect to air by mu 1 with respect to air as 78 is not compared with 75 it is the combination of two absolute marks 78 you have to compare with 100 and 75 you have to compare again with 100 this relative marks are the combination of two absolute marks because absolute means it is compared with hundreds here also it is compared like this so what are you going to do now it is a relative refractive index is a combination of two absolute refractive indexes so you have to take mu 2 a as this is c by v2 okay so i am going to write here this is taken as c by v2 comparing velocity of air is considered to be c velocity of some other medium is considered to be v2 divided by c by v1 so here what is happening c c gets cancelled you don't see anything here so mu 2 1 is taken as v1 by v2 okay so this is called as v1 by v2 and this is the formula for relative refractive index this is the formula for relative refractive index so relative refractive index means v1 by v2 so mu 2 1 is velocity of light in medium 1 divided by velocity of light in medium 2 this is called as a relative refractive index so now i have discussed about the deviation from the rarer to the denser medium so this is the difference here refractive indices are divided into two types one is absolute another is relative refractive index i think the basics of this refractive index is understood to you i have given some of the general examples now let me discuss some other concept over here so here what happens what happens here when the light enters from denser to rarer for example the upper medium is denser the lower medium is rarer and this is going to be the normal here if this is going to be the normal here let us see what happens here this is a denser medium let us consider this is water above and rarer medium this is air below just to understand amply so now what is going to happen here when light ray enters from rarer medium and enters into the denser medium it bends away from the normal it bends away from the normal this is angle of incidence now this is angle of refraction now actually the light ray has to travel like this this is an actual path because of change in the medium the path has been deviated from its actual way so let us see what is deviation here so this is going to be deviation if this is going to be deviation what is the remaining angle this is completely r this is completely delta then what is this angle here this angle is going to be r minus delta now this r minus delta is equal to i because these are called as vertically opposite angles here again so this angle this angle is going to be same according to the concept of geometry therefore delta goes to that side delta is going to be r minus i delta is going to be r minus i so this is a concept where the light ray enters from area to denser where we have taken delta is equal to i minus r and here delta is equal to r minus i which is the formula which i have written here so this is the basic concept i have discussed here so let me go for the next topic related to the same concept here so in this we shall discuss now about real depth and operant depth which is related to our topic today so what do you mean by real depth and operant depth this experiment we are doing from childhood everyone knows about this for example you have taken a small tank 
in this tank you have kept one small coin below the tank here and the light ray the light ray starts from denser because this is water this is all going to be water here so it moves from denser to the rarer medium like this okay and you are going to see from here you are going to see how the light ray is coming so this is going to be normal let me draw the normal also here so i have drawn the normal this is going to be normal so here this is angle of incidence this is angle of refraction what are you going to observe now according to the line of sight what do you mean by line of sight when you are seeing from your eye let us imagine the light is coming from there so if you consider the light is coming from your eye then it is coming from rarer to denser medium it bends towards the normal and you will see the coin here but according to the line of sight if you observe the coin has to raise a little bit because that is called as line of sight this is actually not the line which you are going to consider now the line which is exactly straight to your eye is called as line of sight now so this is called as line of sight so now what are you going to see you are going to see the coin about little bit above and above to the actual position here this is an actual position of the coin but you will see the coin is little bit raised because the line of sight is exactly at this position so if you observe here the coin has been raised let us consider the real depth of the coin the real depth of the coin is considered to be h here and the raised part of the coin is considered to be h dash that is called as upper end depth let us imagine and what is this going to be this part is going to be the shift here let me consider the shift as a yes or d whatever it may be so the shift is considered to be d here how are you going to find out this d it's very simple here this is actual depth this is upper end depth the difference is going to be the shift over here so shift is how much the coin has raised from its actual position that is called as shift here how much the coin has been raised from its actual position is called as shift here so i am going to write shift shift is equal to d h minus h dash let us consider this is angle r this is also angle r this is vertically opposite ang sorry alternate interior angles it is called as it is called as alternate interior angles then this angle and this angle is going to be same these are called as corresponding angles because both the lines are parallel these two are going to be corresponding angles let us take this as ab if you consider this as ab you can write like this tan i tan i is equal to opposite side is ab and adjacent side is going to be h dash opposite side is ab adjacent side is going to be h dash similarly you can write tan r tan r means ab is the opposite side and adjacent side is going to be h over here h over here okay so what are you going to do now you know according to snell's law refractive index mu is called as sin of angle of incidence to the sin of angle of refraction so refractive index according to snell's law is given by it is the ratio of sin of angle of incidence to the sin of angle of refraction so now as if i is approximate if i and r are very small if i and r are very very small then i can write sin i approximately equal to tan i and i can write uh, sin r approximately equal to tan r then what is the new formula you will write you just change for example these angles are very very close just to understand how wrong larger angles if you reduce these two angles i can take sin i closer to tan i sin r closer to tan r therefore refractive index instead of writing sin i and sin r i can write tan i by tan r i can write tan i by tan r over here so what is tan i according to the problem ab by h dash 
होल डिवाइडेड बाय ए बी बाय हेच सो दे फोर रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स म्यू इज गिवेन बाय ए बी ए बी गेट्स कैंसल्ड इन बिगेनिंग हेच बाय हेच डैश दैट इज कॉल्ड एस रियल डेप्थ बाय अपर एंड इट इज रियल डेप्थ बाय अपर एंड डेप्थ इट्स अ वेरी सिंपल कांसेप्ट आई गॉट द आंसर फॉर दिस then if you know once this derivation then you can play with the concepts here so let me draw here what happens now how do you find out the shift here so this is the formula for shift to find out the formula shift here shift is taken as d okay for that you do simple thing here you got mu is equal to h by h dash can you write h dash as h by mu yes you can write okay You can write h dash by h as mu. Then h dash can be written as h by mu. Then what are you going to do? Shift is nothing but h minus h dash. Therefore, shift can be taken as h minus h dash. Instead of that, you will write h by mu. Therefore, you can write shift d is equal to h common or one minus one by mu. This is the formula for shift. Okay. So let me draw the box here. Okay. If you want, you can take a screenshot of this. Let me discuss about the next concept here. So it's very simple because of refraction. Whenever you are playing with a coin in a bucket, when you throw something in a bucket, you feel that the coin has been raised in the bucket. That is because of refraction concept. If you don't pour anything inside the bucket, at least the base of the bucket appears to be a little bit raised, and that is called as the concept of refraction. then how can i how can i say that a bird is cheating the fish now for that it's a very simple concept let me discuss here so the concept over here is for example this is a water okay if this is a water and here let me consider one fish is present inside the water and let me consider what bird is present here a bird is present at this place for birds if you consider bird as an observer for bird fish appears to be at this place fish appears to be at this place just now i told you that as coin will be raised as coin will be raised above because of refraction bird sees that fish is little bit above but bird is having an experience of hunting it knows an actual position of the fish it is an expert king fisher is an expert it is called as king so it is an expert to catch catching the fish here it knows that actual depth of the fish is not this one this is an actual depth just now i told you this is considered to be h here and this should be considered as h dash here and this point which i have to draw here is considered to be shift in this case this is called as shift here so how much the bird is raised bird raised by the formula called as shift here shift of bird it is sometimes it is called as normal shift also just now i have written shift is considered to be h into 1 minus 1 by mu this is called as a shift of bird here so for bird who is an observer here bird is an observer here so bird is an observer which is in the rarer medium which is in air now so which is in air now so you can write refractive index is equal to h by h dash here h by h dash so for bird fish appears to be little bit raised but what is the other situation let me draw and show here the the fish is at the same position the fish is at the same position here as the fish is at the same position for the fish bird which is appear to be here as the bird is in the rarer medium for fish bird appears to be little bit far but here this is considered to be the real height this is called as a real height whereas this is considered to be apparent height apparent height it is not a real height so fish thinks that bird is very very far from it and it gets cheated it will be floating on the water very close to the surface but bird will take the advantage of that and take it away 
so it's a very simple and interesting concept now let us consider in this case a shift is a d here so here what is uh, the formula we have to apply in this case okay so let us see so in this case you write refractive index as h dash by h h dash by h you know that refractive index is always greater than 1 absolute refractive index is always greater than 1 so refractive index is considered to be upper end height by real height here upper end height which is considered to be h dash and real height which is considered to be h here so now as mu absolute refractive index should be greater so numerator should be large always so there here also numerator is large mu is greater than 1 here also refractive index is greater than 1 h dash is large h is lesser than that h dash so now h dash is taken as mu h then how will you find out the shift here let me find out what is the shift of a bird then who is an observer here here the observer is fish previously the observer was bird that is a difference here so fish is that bird is far refractive index is larger value by smaller value here also refractive index is larger value by smaller value numerator should be always large so that the fraction is going to be greater than one otherwise you will get in decimals so that is a condition here next how do you find out the shift of bird d it's very simple previously previously d was h minus h dash previously d was h minus h dash okay and refractive index was h by h dash so h dash was h by mu here h minus h by mu was giving you h common or 1 minus 1 by mu in this case d what is d here d is nothing but h minus h dash here the difference of larger value minus smaller value so this implies that d is equal to h dash what is h dash here you know it is mu h minus h so d is going to be mu minus 1 into h so in this way we can find out the value of shift here so this is the formula for shift of bird this is the formula for shift of fish okay so this is going to be shift of fish when the observer is bird this is going to be shift of bird when the observer is fish here okay so this is the basic concept once you understand this concept then the application of this concept is going to be very easy you can do any problem of this type here so if you have understood this you can take a screenshot of this let us solve the problem now problem is going to be very simple now for you once you understand this concept we can go in depth so if you observe here let us see the problem so if you observe this find the apparent height of the bird first case case 1 find the apparent height of the bird so for example this is the birds real height let us consider as h and this is birds apparent height let it be considered as h dash now okay so it is given that h is 36 36 and you know refractive index of air is going to be 1 and refractive index of water is going to be 4 by 3 this is about water and i told you that fish is under the water now fish is going to be under the water now so how are you going to solve this problem what is the apparent height of the bird so this is the apparent height of the bird h dash so very simple you apply the formula mu is equal to larger by smaller h dash by h because it should be greater than 1 that is the condition already explained by me then let us see what happens now so here h dash h dash is equal to mu into h which is equal to what is mu 4 by 3 into h so calculate the value it will be greater than 36 now 
बिकॉज फोर बाई थ्री इंटू थर्टी सिक्स इज ग्रेटर दैन थर्टी सिक्स सो रियल हाइट इज लेसर अपर एंड हाइट विल बी लार्जर फॉर द केस ऑफ बर्ड हियर लेट एस गो फॉर द नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट प्रॉब्लम हियर फाइंड द अपर एंड डेप्थ ऑफ द फिश हियर सो फॉर द सेकेंड केस हियर केस टू हाउ विल यू फाइंड आउट द अपर एंड डेप्थ ऑफ द फिश नाउ सो फिश इज एट दिस प्लेस बट इट अपियर टू बी हियर This is the surface of the water. This is the bird which is called as an observer now. So, how will you find out the upper end height, upper end depth? So, this is h dash, and this is going to be h. So, according to our problem, mu is going to be larger value by smaller value. That is h by h dash. Our aim is to find out h dash. H dash is equal to h by mu. There, h dash is equal to mu into h. Multiplying refractive index with h gives you larger value. Dividing refractive index gives you smaller value. Therefore, h dash is equal to h by mu. What is h there? H is nothing but the depth of the fish. The same 36 36 meters it is given. So 36 by 4 by 3. If you calculate the value which you are going to get after calculation will be lesser than 36 because the h dash is lesser than 36. So this is the second case here. At what distance the bird appears to the fish? At what distance the bird appears to the fish? Then you have to consider the net distance here. So total distance you have to find out. Okay, from the fish to the apparent height of the bird. So what is the total distance here? It's very simple. The depth of the fish here. This part is going to be thirty-six meters, and from the surface to that height, this height, which is uh, mu into h that is 4 by 3 into 36 4 by 3 into 36 so total distance total distance according to the third case here at what distance the bird appears to the fish means you have to consider from here to here and that is 36 plus 4 by 3 into 36 this is the answer okay So what is the last case? D. At what distance will be the fish appear to the bird? At what distance will be the fish appears to the bird? So what is the distance? This is going to be the distance here. This is going to be the distance here. So from here to here, it is thirty-six meters. But this is h dash. And what is h dash? Just now I told you it is h by mu. So what is the total distance? What is h by mu here? Just now we wrote here that is thirty six into four. That is thirty six into three by four. Thirty six into three by four here. The total distance from the from the bird to the distance of the fish, which is appearing for the bird here. So this total distance, not we should not take from here. You should consider from here to the bird. So how are you going to get thirty six plus thirty six into three by four? so this is the answer for this question it's a very simple question so for the fish bird appears to be far that's why it will be very cool and is made full that's the reason here so thank you for listening this is just to encourage you that physics not is physics is not a boring subject it is a very interesting subject so by small simple simple concepts first i want to create interest in you once you get interest then you'll become mad of physics physics is such a subject that it is like a drug when you'll get once you get addicted to that you are unable to sleep thank you for listening to the class let me continue with the more interesting concepts every day which will help you in neat also and create interest in you also thank you very much